should you decide to retire? So uh, an interesting, I'm reading this book right here. Pensions, Labor, and Individual Choice, NBER, National Bureau of Economic Research. This is from 1983. Uh, they did a conference, all these economists. Oops, they did a conference in Port Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. I can't roll my freaking R's. I need a Spanish person to teach me how to roll my R's. Please. I got to press my wife, dude. I got to press my wife. Anyway, so I want to share, because we got a lot to go over here. I want to share something here with you. I think you'll find this of interest. And common sense, too, by the way. And this is from the study, uh, Pensions and the Retirement Decision. Uh, the decision to retire is based largely on a worker's post-retirement income and his perceived health and life expectancy. Hmm. Keep hanging there. Hang in there for a second because we're going to show you something else. In valuing the entitlements to be received on retirement, a key consideration is how long the individual expects to live. If working one more year yields an increase of 10% in, his, in, in payment, his retirement benefit, the additional year may be a worthwhile sacrifice with a person with a life expectancy of 25 more years, but not for one with an eight-year life expectancy. And there's just tons more in here, and it's just fantastic, and I love it. And even though it's older, it still rings true today. So I want to go, we're going to draw this on this guy, and we're going to assume, check this out. Get out of there. We're going to assume you got 10 years of life expectancy. So you're 60 years old, all right? And we're going to live for 10 more years. We're going to live till we're 70. Oops. Or we're 60 years old, we're going to live till 90. Or we're 60 years old, we're going to live to 80, all right? So if I work one more year, that's 10% of my life, if I'm going to live till I'm 70, is gone for that extra year. What did I get for that extra year? What did I get? Well, you got what? Some more money. Some more money to last nine years, all right? If I'm 60 years old and my life expectancy is 80, that's a 5%. I'm using 5% of my remaining life for another year of labor. What did, again, if you like, and the book talks about it, some people actually enjoy their work. There's high optimization, high utility in working. That's fine. But I don't, I, I don't get that a lot. I get people say, yeah, I'm, I'm over this. I want to do something else. So the utility isn't there for anymore. Not enough to, you're losing 10% of your labor for what? A 10% increase in your retirement benefit? What the flipping do? Here you're losing 5% of your remaining life for what? A 10% increase of even that in your, in your remaining, uh, in your retirement? Wow. Now here's different. Here you're losing 2.5%. All right, so you can say, well, yeah, but I think I could be this right here, Josh. I think I'm going to be the, in this category because I'm losing 2.5% for one more year. If I get a 10% increase, that's a good return. So again, let's draw it out. If I get a 10% per year increase in my retirement benefit, and it costs me 2.5% of my remaining life expectancy, that's a good trade. If I get a 10% increase in my retirement benefit, but it's costing me 10% of my life expectancy, that's not a good trade. Here I'm losing 5% of my life expectancy, but I'm getting a 10 pre, uh, 10 percent increase in my retirement benefit that might be a good trade i don't know and the question is are you really getting a 10 percent increase but but anyway at the end of the day people say well i think most people are going to default to this they're going to default there the fat default and i think that's a mistake i don't know when you're going to live but this is where we go back to this category right here so we're going to start with this and we're going to see here odds of dying in the u.s age and gender and more gender how double dog dare you josh how dare you and we're going to show you right here, odds of dying for a man. And we're going to say the guy's 60 years old. All right. So what you'll see here, and if I remember, I'll put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the show notes, the doobie doo. So here are your 60. Your odds of dying within 20 years are 40% right there, which means 60% of the time you'll remain, 40% of the time you won't remain. That, that's, that's, that would put us right here. Check this out. Your odds of dying within 30 years before you're 90 years old are 80%. That's before you're 9 years old. Yet most people default to this right here. And yet only 20% of a 60-year-old male population lives that long. Does that make any sense? We're saying, okay, it's, it's kind of like the long-term care insurance thing. About 15% have significant long-term care. But everyone thinks it's going to be them. So I'm sitting there thinking, what? Why is this a default? Well, because we're well, 30-year retirement. That's what the 4% rule is based on. 30 years, 30 years. But it, there's no evidence of that. The evidence is that the vast majority of 60-year-old men are going to be dead by the, before they're 80 or 90 years old. And a significant minority will be dead before they're 80. Th these are just facts. Now we can look at the ladies. Ladies! 
my lady. And you have a higher life expectancy because you don't work as many dangerous jobs. So if you're 60, 60 years old today, you uh, right there, you still have right there. If you're 60 years old today, you still have a 67% chance you'll be dead by your time you're 90. Even uh, a 30% chance you'll be dead by the time you're 80. You factor that in on top of decreasing retirement expending as you get older. I'm kind of like, is it worth sacrificing this extra year for we're making this a default when this is not reality? It's not. For some of you, I was talking to two people the other day, both from Ohio, by the way. I get a lot of Ohio people. And both have a, a, a dad or a mom, I can't remember. Uh, 90, one had 98, one had 102. And the guy, the both were, I think it was both men, actually. The one guy's still checking his dividends, still checking stock charts. You know what I'm saying? That's the exception, not the rule. All right, so now let's go to this right here. We're going to rich, broke, or dead. Post-retirement calculator. So I'm going to say I'm 60 years old. I got 30 years in retirement left. And I just showed you only 20% of men have 30 years in retirement left. Now, you got to look at your genetics. Are you white? Are you black? You got to look at your parents. Are your parents, I mean, what's their life, life expectancy? You got to look at your own lifestyle. You drink like a freaking, I mean, actually, this will show us something right here, too. This is pretty interesting. They'll say, what kind of risk do you take? Do you do um, right here? Do you skydive? Do you bicycle, bicicleta? Do you swim? Do you run? These are odds of dying from particular activities. So obviously, do you drive? You drive a motorcycle at 100 miles an hour. Do you drive drunk? Do you, uh, you know, freaking take cocaine? The whole thing. I mean, if you're doing this risk, the likelihood of you hanging around until you're 90 are just not there, man. Just not. So anyway, let's go to this right here. Rich, dead, and broke, or broke. So I'm 60 years old. I got 30 years of retirement. I'm gonna put my portfolio as a moderately aggressive portfolio. 60% bonds, 6% uh, stocks, 20% bonds, 20% cash. Um, I have an average social security benefit. What's the likelihood uh, my spending is 40,000 a year? What's the likelihood that my portfolio is dead before I am? And you can see right here, uh, by the time I'm 75, 28.8% of the time I'm dead. 28.8% of the time I'm dead. 0% of my, am I broke. 0%. 10% of the time I have more than twice what I put in. 31% of the time, I have more than what I started with, my million bucks. And 30% of the time, I have less. So basically, by the time I'm 75, this is 15 years from now, the same percentage of my death and having less money I put in is the same. And not, none of the times that I broke. So now I go up to I'm 85. Now it's 25 years. 64% uh, of the time, I'm dead. I think, does it say men? Or does it say, yeah, male. Because males crush. Men. 64% of the time, I'm dead. 7% uh, of the time, I have a balance over twice what I started with. 12% of the time, I have a balance greater than what I started with. 16% of the time, I have a balance less than what I started with. And 3% of the time, I'm broke. Does that make sense? So two-thirds of the time, I'm dead. 0.3% I died with no money. 16% of the time, I have more, uh, uh, less than what I initially started with a million bucks. But I hope that makes sense. So again, we go back 75. I th 20, thir basically, 30% of the time I'm dead. 30% of the time I have less than I started with. And roughly 40% of the time I have more than I started with. And even 10% of the time I have twice as much. So by the time I'm 90, 83% of the time I'm dead. 1% of the time I'm broke. That's it. Just 1% of the time I'm broke. Why? Because I'm dead. 83% of the time I'm dead. Now you can make an argument. Yeah, but if you take the survivors... Well, again, the survivors would be about 20% of the population survives. How many of the times were they broke with a 4% in that regard? And not very many. So the question is, are you likely to die before you're broke? And the answer is unequivocally yes. So why are we sacrificing the remaining proportion of our life expectancy? Ten, why would we sacrifice 10% of our life left to a work that's for a job that's going to give us, and I'm using 10% because that's what the book used. That doesn't make any sense, dude. It doesn't make any sense. Your life is dwindling. Your spending goes down. And this actually even, it gets even worse because this doesn't even show the spending goes down. This shows that the spending is, is constant. And some guy was like, constant spending doesn't mean adjusted with inflation. Yes, it does. Constant spending 100% means it's adjusted with inflation. Some guy's like, ah, you're wrong, wrong. I said, like I always say, show me any evidence, any evidence. This is what they all say. It drives me crazy. What I base my book, Relax and Retire, 
I say, show me any evidence of retirees spending increasing with inflation over a 30-year, 20-year retirement. Show me any evidence, any. I mean, I literally would love to see. I've been begging for this by years. I've been on advisor perspectives. I've been begging freaking people a whole lot smarter than this than I am. Not that many, actually, but still, I've been begging. I have yet to get anything. And what they all say, oh, well, you think people aren't spending more for groceries this year? You think people aren't spending more for property tax? Show me the evidence over the typical retirement that people's spending increases each and every year with inflation. On any given year, it will, absolutely. But show me any evidence. I, literally, I, this is a serious question. Kind of like I said about the uh, J to the A to the B to the S's. This is pre-COVID. I always argue, I'd like to see any evidence, any, that the CDC recommended uh, J-A-B-S's for infants uh, that's safe. I'd like to see that because you know, we have all these different ones. You know, we got the MMR, the DPT, all that stuff. I was like, is there any evidence, any studies done that combine that these don't hurt children? And the answer is I've yet to find. They had one thing at the Institute of Medicine. If you actually looked at it, you say, that doesn't, that's the exact opposite of what you say it does. It's crazy. Man. It's the same. I've always asked. And people say, oh, you're Jenny McCarthy. You want people to be in a, uh, what's the thing, the polio? Uh, iron lung. I said, I just want to see the evidence that all these things were put in kids' bodies. And now the CDC recommended JD, JABS is much higher than what it was when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I got chicken pox. It, we used to have chicken pox parties. You know, go to your friend's house, get chicken pox. You know what I'm saying? That's what you used to do. So I didn't get a chicken pox back. I'm sure we got the MMR back then, 19, you know, the early 70s. Actually, I don't know. But now we're getting tons of stuff, dude. Tons and tons and tons of stuff. One of the reasons I'm not as big as a uh, corporatist as I used to be, by the way, because, uh, you know, all these companies, a lot of these companies are getting rich based on government largesse, you know, government mandates and things like this. And I said, well, if the government's going to allow you to get rich because they're mandating of various things, and on top of the military industrial complex, the educational industrial complex and whatnot, and the research and all that, then there should be the people who make the most money should have to pay a little bit more tax. If the book, like Jeff Bezos got $200 billion of net worth, I'm sorry, he did not earn that himself. He, I mean, he did. Don't get me I love Amazon. I'm a huge fan. But Bezos himself, Jeff Bezos, he, we know for a fact that that guy was helped by government uh, regulations. That's just a fact, man. Uh, Elon Musk, the second richest guy in the world, absolutely unequivocally, if not put in there by the powers that be, certainly helped by government regulations and government largesse. They should pay more than just a guy digging ditches for a living in terms of tax rate because they were helped more by the government for their wealth. I don't, I don't even know if they control it, frankly. I don't know. But be as it may, they still have Jeff Bezos is still selling $5 billion of Amazon stock. Didn't hurt the stock at all. And he's buying another billion dollar yacht. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so you're say, but there was capitalism. <laughs> anyway, so think twice before you say i could work one more year because i'm telling you the numbers don't lead to you to believe that working one more year is going to do a whole lot now it could if you got debt you know it's got a guy um he's got a mortgage man he's you know he just got laid off he's got a mortgage got a home equity loan and he's gonna to have to find another job because he's got this debt if you don't have debt though or your debt's you know reasonable man i'm not suddenly retire if you like your work stay i'm just saying at the end of the day is your work giving you the utility that the enjoyment in retirement would be and think long and hard about that. Say, what is really my life expectancy going to be? All right. Love your thoughts. God bless. We'll see you. I'll put these links in the doobie duke. And uh, don't forget to comment. Oh, by the way, don't forget to subscribe to my newsletters, the doobie duke. Today, I got three more days of my, yeah, two more days of my uh, sale on my investment course. It's in the doobie duke. Use code half off, half off, and you can get the half, half price on my investment course. God bless.